The iOS 17 public beta is here, and I wanna cover some of the best new features coming to the update later this year. This video is sponsored by Dark Noise. Let's get into it. What I think the biggest feature of iOS 17 will be is standby. Standby makes your iPhone useful when you're not using it. The way this works is you put your iPhone on a stand in landscape mode, then plug it into power. This can be either with a cable or wireless charging. Once stable, standby will activate. Standby has three different modes. The first is a widget based system. There are two sides to this. You can long press on either one of the sides to edit them. You'll get a picker similar to the widget stack. Here you can add widgets to either one of the stacks. Third party apps will have to be updated to support standby. You can also toggle smart rotate to have the OS smartly rotate through those widgets. I set mine so that I always have the clock on the left side, but on the right side, it automatically rotates through useful information. The next standby mode is photos. You can get to this by swiping to the left on the screen. This mode shows, well, your photos. By default, it pulls photos it thinks you would like, but you can long press on it to edit it. Here you can pick from some smart lists like people, pets, natures, and even cities but you can manually go in and pick an album. I'm gonna set mine to my best landscape photography album. Once set, it will cycle through your photos, displaying them and displaying the time. It will also show the location and date of when those photos were taken. You can also rotate through these modes by swiping up on the images. The last standby mode is clock. There are several of these that you can get to by swiping up and down on the screen. Most of them can be edited by long pressing on them and selecting the dot. Here you can change the color theme. The only one you can't do this for is the world clock. I really like the digital clock and have been using this on my nightstand when I sleep. Speaking of, standby detects when you might be sleeping and puts a red tent on the clock so it doesn't add a lot of light to your room and disturb your sleep. While using standby, notifications come in a big banner. You can tap on them and jump right into the app. It works best for apps that support landscape view, but unfortunately there's not a lot of iPhone apps that support the landscape view. So I have a feeling a lot of developers will be frantically updating their apps this summer. There's also support for live activities at the top of standby. The coolest feature of standby though is how it works with MagSafe. You can use standby with any charger, whether it's cable or wireless or whatever, but if you use it with a MagSafe puck, it can remember your settings for that individual puck. So for example, in my office, I have it use widget mode. I like to have lots of information rotating in front of me when I'm sitting at my desk. But in my bedroom, I just want the digital clock. The last thing I want when I'm trying to go to sleep is a reminder of a meeting or something happening tomorrow. Since I use MagSafe pucks in both of these spots, the iPhone remembers my preference for which standby mode to use and which widgets to use on the office and which clock theme to use in my bedroom. I'm assuming this uses some sort of unique identification number built into MagSafe. That's why it's exclusive to MagSafe pucks. This is just a really nice feature and makes standby so much more useful because I'm not having to constantly change which mode it's in depending on where I'm setting it up. With the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, standby mode can just stay on all the time thanks to the always on display. On other iPhones though, you do need to nudge it to wake it up. Widgets can now be interactive. I'm so excited for this. This means you can check off tasks and to-do lists, resume playing in audio apps, start a timer, or even toggle a smart home device, all without having to open an app. Before, shortcuts and contacts were the only interactive widgets. Now, first party and third party apps can update to support this feature and have interactive widgets. This is going to make customizing home screens a lot of fun. Now, the big thing these widgets can't do is they can't open the system keyboard. They're just for toggling buttons. So if you think about it, like checking off a task in a to-do list or toggling a smart home device or toggling a timer or something like that, there's no keyboard support for them. This video is sponsored by Dark Noise. Dark Noise is one of my all time favorite applications. This is a noise app that doesn't just sound good, it looks good as well. Dark Noise has over 50 different high quality sounds from white noise to thunderstorms to calming beaches to spaceships. 
When playing a sound, you get these stunning animations. But the app takes it a step further as well. You can make mixes of the sounds to build custom scenes. One of my favorites that I made mixes heavy rain and thunderstorms with creak and windy tree sounds. This is extremely calming to me. Dark Noise is the app I use when I need to focus and get some serious work done. I can distract myself really easily and avoid the task at hand. To combat this, I throw in my AirPods, turn on noise canceling, and put on dark noise. The rest of the world simply just disappears and I'm focused just on the task in front of me. Dark noise isn't only for working. It's great for that, but it also works out really great if you're somebody that needs white noise to fall asleep to, or maybe you wanna just put on some lake sounds and relax. Dark noise is available on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Dark Noise is free to download, so go check it out. I will put a link to it in the description below. My thanks to Dark Noise for sponsoring this video. The keyboard did get a massive update in iOS 17. First, the autocorrect feature is massively updated. It works extremely well. And trust me, I cannot spell to save my life. It just works so much better. When it autocorrects a word, there will be a temporary underline. You can tap on this and it jumps back to the previous version. There is also sentence correction. This will look at your completed sentence and go back and fix any grammar or spelling mistakes. The keyboard got a lot better at predictive typing. This isn't just for words now, but also for sentences and phrases. You'll see a prompt come up, kind of shadowed out, and you can just tap the space bar and it will fill in that sentence. It works extremely well. There's also improved dictation. Again, this is another thing that works extremely well. All of the keyboard updates are just impressive right out of the gate. I love using dictation. Like I mentioned, I can't spell to save my life. And I use it for more than just messages. I use it for writing down notes or even writing out parts of scripts. I've done dictation for that. And the new dictation is very fast and accurate. Reminders got support for auto sorting grocery list. Edit your grocery list project and then change the list type to groceries. Now when you add a new item to get at the store, it will auto sort it into the right category. This should make shopping so much easier because related items will be next to each other. Siri got some big improvements as well. First, you no longer have to say the hey part. You can just trigger it using the phrase Siri. You can also interrupt Siri in the middle of giving it a command and so you can fix a mistake or you know cancel something out. You can also follow up with another command immediately. For example, you can use Siri to remind you to take out the trash and to play music you would like to listen to. It works really well. So that's it for kind of the top features of iOS 17. There's still a ton more that I'm gonna be covering throughout the whole summer. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a whole video on reminders and notes because those two apps got some killer updates. I'm very excited for those. So be sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. And my thanks to Dark Noise for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.